Designation. Today we're going to talk about classroom routines, rules, and procedures in your art classroom and how to introduce them in a fun and engaging way. Alright, so when we think about classroom rules and routines and introducing them to our kids, we're often a little bit stressed out. We're like, what well, ones do I teach them? How do I introduce them? Don't worry, it's okay. I'm going to give you some suggestions of what you can do um, and how to introduce them in an engaging way um, in your classroom. And I will also talk about ways you can do this with uh, middle school and high school because a lot of these will be really relevant for the elementary level um, and if you did them maybe in the later grades, not so relevant. However, that being said, you can always take what I say and adapt or mod modify for your age group as well. All right, so the very first thing that you can do at any level is ask your kids about rules and routines. So first is access prior knowledge. All right, this is what you do. All right, guys, so today we're going to be talking about classroom routines, um, rules, and procedures. Hmm. Does anybody here know a classroom rule that we may have in an art class? Okay, so... Ask your kids. Now, don't just take hands. You will see hands shoot up because that is normal, but instead we're going to do a think pair share. The kids are going to think on their own first, then they're going to think with a friend. Now, if they had no thoughts and they're like stunned because it's like back to school and they're like, where am I? Don't worry. Now they can talk to a buddy and this is a second opportunity not to get only to get their buddy's information but now to rethink about it again. So they'll have two brains thinking together. And then once the buddies have done that, then you're going to share out to the class and that's when you'll take the hands. So this is what you do. All right, this is great. I see some hands shooting up. However, we're gonna stop and we're gonna slow it down. I want everybody to either close their eyes or get into a comfortable position. And I want you to think about, think back to last year. What rules and routines did we have in this classroom or what rules and procedures do you think might there might be in an art classroom? I would like you to think for one minute by yourself, not talking to anybody, you may think. Now you can walk slowly around the room, the kids are just sitting there, and they're thinking, and you're calm. And after a minute, you can say, all right, now that you have thought about it and you have some ideas in your head, I would like you to find a buddy and you're going to share your, what you thought, your ideas to your friend. Okay? So when I say go, I would like you to turn to someone near you. You're not getting up out of your seat and wandering, wandering the room unless, of course, you see you're the only person without a buddy at your table and there's one other person across the room that may then let me know and I will think about it okay so when I say go turn to someone close to you at your table and I want you to share what your ideas are to them ready go now this is either going to go one of two ways really really great or it's going to be an opportunity to teach them how to turn and talk to a buddy. So if it turns out well, what you will see is all kids talking to somebody. Or if it doesn't go well, there's sometimes, often, you know, there's a couple kids who are just sitting there and then first reaction is just to stare at the ceiling or nowhere and do nothing. Uh, they don't know how to ask for a buddy or ask somebody to be their partner. Or there's kids now in groups of threes and, and then there's one kid who's like, I'm just going to go right across the room because there was an opportunity to and I'm going to go find that person who's actually my friend over there and we're going to be really loud. So if it goes sideways, you're going to go stop, look and listen. I'm going to wait till everybody has stopped moving. Nothing's in your hands. Your body, your eyes are all facing me and you look like you're ready to listen. And then you'll wait till that happens. And if it doesn't, you go, now, if there's somebody in this room and you see them and they haven't stopped and listened, quietly whisper to them that they need to stop what they're doing and look at the teacher. Awesome. Okay, so now that we're all listening to the teacher, 
you. Now you can say, all right, look around. I asked you to get a buddy. What happened? Who can offer me a suggestion of what happened here? The kids would be like, somebody's going across the room. Or, there's the person who doesn't have a buddy. All right, what are some solutions for the problems that we have? Then talk about the solutions for the problems. Talk about how to ask for a buddy. Hey, would you be my partner, please? The answer is always yes, because that's how the world works. Yes, your, the answer is never no. The answer is always yes. All right, now we got that out of the way. Now that we know the expectations of how to find a buddy, when I say go, quietly find a buddy, talk to them in a small volume that only your buddy can hear. Share your ideas of what you think classroom rules and routines and procedures are. Go. Okay, now they, now they are going to do this well. And you have reinforced what think pair share is in your classroom for the year. You just taught them a rule, sorry, a procedure or a routine for the year through teaching rules and routines and procedures. It's like a two in one bonus. Okay, so now they've all talked and then you can ask them for decisions. All right, stop and listen. Awesome. Okay, who, who here would like to share some ideas? Now you should have a ton of hands up, not just those two people at the very beginning who are like really eager to share their ideas. You know who they are. Um, but now you're gonna have lots of hands up because now they had an opportunity to think, they had an opportunity to share and listen to somebody and now they're able to give you a more, um, more people are, are able to give you a response, okay? As they're doing this, you can record the ideas on your whiteboard. This is, of course, my imaginary whiteboard. Record them there or on some chart paper if you're instead doing this at a carpet. I do love carpet time in art rooms or in any classroom because it's a way to manage the kids especially the younger ones. I have full control of kids at the carpet because there's nobody way out in the back of the art classroom doing something other than listening to me. You know what's happening because that's why we all sit in the back of the room at staff meetings. I'm not the only one, don't judge. Okay, so, um, the next one you could try teaching to your kids is call and respond. This one is a whole body um, activity. So you're gonna teach the whole body, not just part of the body. You're teaching, getting the kids to move and think with their body and their ears and their eyes. Okay, so call and respond is first you're going to teach part of a phrase and an action. Then the kids will repeat, back, repeat the action and the phrase back to you. Then you'll repeat, sorry, then you'll say the next step, and then the kids will repeat after you. And you'll keep going through the different steps in sentences and with actions until your routine has been taught. So we're going to pretend um, how to, let's teach um, how to clean a paintbrush. So here's my invisible paintbrush, and I'm going to clean it, okay? All right, everybody, stand up. We're going to practice and learn how to clean a paintbrush today. All right, so grab your paintbrushes, lovely, and have one hand ready to help get that paint out of the bristles. Perfect. Repeat after me. When I wash a paintbrush, the kids go, when I wash a paintbrush, I rinse out all the paint. I rinse out all the paint. Um, Whatever, you keep going on with that, okay? I don't want to see any color. I don't want to see any color. Drip out in, whatever. Okay, so that would be how you do that. So you're gonna teach them a, a little routine. Clearly, you want to think about it first because that's how you see how it's being really awkward. I didn't think about it first. I'm just trying to give you an example. Think about your call and respond before you teach it to the kids. Otherwise, you're going to look like me. Okay, so think about it. Think about the actions you want to do. You know, first I do my wash my paintbrush to get rid of all the paint. Blah 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 blah. Um, and then I stick my I stick it straight up. Whatever to dry. Um, so think about 
that so you're not only modeling it but the kids are thinking about the actions at the same time so they're learning what they should be doing now after you've teach, taught all the steps then you're going to ask them to find a buddy all right now that you have learned the steps you're now going to become the teacher when I say go you're going to find a partner does anybody know my rule for how to find a partner they might not okay here's my rule on how to find a partner. One, you need to know this magical phrase. Would you be my partner, please? The kids repeat, would you be my partner, please? The answer is always yes. So if somebody asks you to be your partner, the only answer that should come out of your mouth is yes. But what happens if you already have a partner? Do you say no? No. No, you shouldn't say no, because that could hurt the person's feelings. And you really would love to be their partner, but you already have one. So you need to let them know that, so that way they're not walking away with hurt feelings. So, if you already have a partner, and somebody asks you, would you be my partner please, you say, I am sorry, I already have a partner, maybe next time. We need to say maybe next time, so that way we, we, they know that there's always the opportunity for another time to be your partner. And that way their feelings aren't hurt. Okay? So, when I say go, find a partner. And I would like you to teach, take turns teaching um, each other the routine we just learned. Go. So now the kids are going to take turns teaching each other. So one partner, um, the first partner will teach the routine and then you'll stop everybody okay all right now it's the second partner's turn to teach the routine now they teach each other so now they should know that routine well and it's not just you going in the front of the classroom all right when you wash paint brushes i really just want you to take the run on the sink until there's no paint coming out and then stick it to dry bristles standing up how many kids do you think actually listened to that like honestly sure they probably did and then they thought i don't really care <laughs> Okay, but if you model it this way, now you know, and they know that you know that they know how to wash the paintbrush really well, or how to line up, or how to enter and start the class, or how to go get their supplies from the back counter, whatever the rule or routine might be. Should you do this with all of them? Maybe not. In a primary level, kindergarten, probably. Probably would be a really good idea. Okay, <laughs> that's a whole nother ball game. Especially kindergarten. It's just a whole nother ball game. There's going to be kids crying from the start. And all you did was nothing. They're going to be crying. Okay? Just prepare yourself for that if you're a new teacher. They cry. Don't know why. One time, actually in grade four, I had a kid. I didn't pick her hand. And she started crying. And I was in complete shock. Why are you crying? You didn't pick my hand. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. <laughs> that happened. <laughs> was new for me because I started at high school and worked it down to elementary and I was like, <laughs> why is that a problem at 10? It was, but anyways, I did value her feelings and I did value her that all that. We had a good conversations, but in the moment, in my head, I was like, what did I do wrong? Okay, so next thing um, is to... Um, have student volunteers model and have you model as well. So you, if you don't want to do a call and respond, the first, you do need to model some of the routines and behaviors. So if you're doing the paintbrush thing, pretend you go over to a table and pretend that you've just finished your piece. And have all the kids listen, and then I want you to show them, all right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully lift up my paintbrush with one hand on the handle and one hand under the bristles so that way I make sure no paint drips on the table, on the floor, on the clothes I'm wearing, or on my friends. No paint drips. Next, I'm going to carefully push and stand up out of my seat and I'm going to walk over to the sink slowly and carefully. Next, and then you'll continue to model this, actually doing it. So you're actually getting, you're going to a kid's seat, pretending you're a kid, and actually going through the steps, okay? Um, so that way they can actually see what to do. This can be used for lining up, for waiting out in the hall, um, for panning in their artwork, for asking help, whatever. Getting materials, 
Whatever it might be, the best thing you could do is model. I model mostly everything. You can also get students to model. So if it's not a procedure that you want done in a very, 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 very specific way, like washing paintbrushes, um, then you can get kids to help you model. So in that classroom discussion initially, if somebody suggested lining up out the door, oh, we got to walk to the door. Awesome. Do you think that you could show us how to walk and line up at the door? Great. So the kid walks lines up. Is there anybody else who would like to show the class how to walk and line up at the door? Awesome. Okay, so you can have different kids model. So not only are you modeling, but kids are modeling. And of course, this allows all the kids to see and hear um, what they should be doing. We cannot assume they know. They might, they might not, okay? But this way, they know for sure. Okay, next you can do some drama skits. So once you've taught all your rules, you can break kids up into groups and write some of the rules or routines or procedures on some paper and then give it to different groups and then they're going to go off for 15 minutes come up with a skit that's going to share and teach the rest of the class what that routine or rule looks like okay and then they'll come back you'll have presentations and they'll go home happy okay so that's another way to do it um, last um, you can do a game now you can do games for all ages maybe not kindergarten they might cry if they lose I don't know I don't teach kindergarten as often Okay, so um, again, I mostly am in the upper elementary range. Okay, so do a game. Um, first group, for example, with a clean table. So you might be like, all right, everyone, it's time for cleanup. But we're going to have a game today. I have a timer for six minutes here. The table that is, the, that is clean. First, with all materials and mediums away properly, with all paintbrushes uh, washed with bristles up, with no paint in them, first wins the prize, whatever it might be. Okay? So we're looking for team effort, um, for, for blah, 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 teamwork, and working together to make sure that the table is done. Whether it's your mess or not, help the room. Help others. Don't just think about yourself. Ready? Go. So then the kids are off. They're moving. Hope safely. Make sure you talk about safety before they do this. Yes, it's a race, but we need to be safe. Um, safely around the room. Cleaning up. First table. Sits down. Done. Okay. And then you go and check. Oh, uh, mm, yep. This paintbrush looks pretty good. There's no paint. Blah, blah, blah. All right. This table wins. So now they've um, and you can do this for every, like, Friday for the first month, okay? So that way they're reinforcing that expectation. At the middle and high school level, it's a little different. You probably don't want to do some of what I just talked about. That being said, you should pull some of it up there. You might want to still model some things, like um, taking care of a ceramics area cleaning it up or modeling um, cleaning paintbrushes still and how to put that away. You should take kids over and show them what areas look like and how you expect it to look after at the end of class. This is this is the paint cupboard. This is what it looks like today. I expect it to look like this every time. You should talk to them and explain routines such as coming into class, how they start, um, you should talk to them about what to do at the end of class. Are you just going to let them do whatever they want? All right, ten, last 10 minutes, go hang out at, beside the door and wait there. I wouldn't, because when I was in high school, I sure did sneak out that door when the teacher wasn't looking, and I don't know what I did for five minutes in between class and the hallway. But I probably felt, I think I just wanted, who knows? Who knows? Okay? But it was like a goal, so then I did it. But if I did it, maybe other kids are doing it too. Or that's just in my head because I was that kid. I don't know. But do you want them to loiter at the door on their phones doing whatever? Or do you want them to sit there and wait at the table? Whatever it is, whatever, whatever uh, makes sense for you, you need to explain that to the kids. You need to explain to them how to clean up. You need to show them how to do it. You'd be surprised um, how many kids don't know how to do some things, right? And you need to um, really be clear with your expectations. Okay? Now, the last thing is that you need to reinforce all of this. 
there's no point in teaching any of this if you're not going to reinforce it or correct behavior um, anytime kids don't do it. There's no point. Don't teach it then. But you need to, when you start noticing the kids start getting comfortable in your classroom, you need to start reinforcing it. And don't, like, embarrass kids. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying go, don't call them out in front of the class. That'd be awful. But you can go over and say, hey, I noticed whatever, whatever. Your table still has a lot on. Do you think we can go back and just tidy it up a little bit more, wipe it down with some paper towel and soap? That'd be great. Thanks. Okay? Um, if the whole class is not meeting your expectation, the next day I would be like, say, guys, let's, we need to have a group meeting. I noticed that we had a lot of paintbrushes in the sink, just left there for me to clean on my own time. I had to stay here a really long time after school. I felt so sad because it was sunny. I really wanted to go home, but I had to clean up your paintbrushes. I just make up things, even if it took me like five seconds to clean those paintbrushes. That's not the point. I will be. Ex I will exaggerate that forever to understand how it makes other people feel. The custodian was sad because there were pencils crying on the floor and there was paper everywhere and he had to stay or she had to stay a really long time. I think we need to apologize to the custodian for leaving such a mess. Now, after we go through the whole guilt thing, then remind them, all right, guys, what should we do for cleanup routine? What should we do for this routine? Can we talk about it and make sure that this doesn't happen again? Okay, now if there's one kid who is a, a repeat offender, those are the children that you bring to your desk and you have a calm, peaceful conversation that they need to meet the expectations of your classroom. The next time they do this again, you might have to call, call home or whatever, okay? Or talk to parents or have them, have them come in. I. I don't go straight to that because at the beginning of the year I'm I'm trying to build connections and relationships with the kids, not go, I'm calling your parents, you left that paintbrush on day one. Well they might have forgotten the routine already. Okay? So, um yeah. Those are some of my ideas for um creating um classroom um routines and teaching them in an engaging way. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below the video. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this Artastic channel. Have a great day.